Would you like to start a war right now with Eddie from Voodoo Glow Skulls? We can. No. No, no, I don't. I need <laughs> friends, dude. I need friends. Matt from Title Holder. I gotta tell you, okay, Hold on. for you who, for you people who don't think that advertising on Instagram works, <laughs> it was right in the heat of punk rock bowling and uh, music festival, and I'm going through Instagram. And I see an advertisement for title holder and I check it out for the 10, 15 seconds. And I immediately like followed you guys and then sent you a uh, email and was like, I got to interview you. Cause I loved what I heard. We have a brand new album that has just released in the last couple of days. Um, what better time. And animal is my favorite song on that album, by the way. Um, nice, nice. I love the lyrics of it. So for those who don't know, elevator pitch on i mean you're kind of the brainchild of title holder right yeah yeah i, I started uh i started it during the pandemic actually yeah as we all started things but you actually followed through <laughs> after the pandemic i'm surprised that i did but yeah yeah i i had a little bit of a, a fire litter under my ass to to keep it going from some local community uh musicians so i wanted to just follow through so how, tell us who a uh, title holder is so title holder originally started in 2020. Um, I, I had been writing a couple like pop punk ska tunes and I had decided that, you know, I was going to demo them out at my little, you know, my little home bedroom. I used to live in Astoria, Queens. I just moved out to Jersey. Um, so I make a couple demos and I'm listening to Krista makes a podcast. And at the end of his first episode, he goes, Hey, you know, uh, we're not touring. It's the pandemic. If you want to uh, work with with me or or have me listen to a song and critique it, shoot me an email. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'll uh, I'll send him a story of my life, like the first version of it. And he emailed me back and he was like, yo, let's work together. Um, so virtually we started just bouncing song ideas off of each other. I sent him a bunch of demos and he would critique them and say, hey, you know, this needs a pre-course, write a pre-course and call me later. Um, and that just kind of lit this fire under my ass to, to keep going with it. Um, now, you know, we're going to the studio, we're, we're recording songs. I found an entire team of people to record with me. Um, but title holder as it is right now, um, uh, is my, my good friends, Andrew, who plays lead guitar. Chase is on drums. Joey Delacio on bass. AJ Gillette is playing saxophone with us. Rodrigo Rodriguez is playing baritone sax and Kevin Jackson is on the trombone. So that's the the current live lineup that you're going to see if you come come see a show with us uh, anytime in the future. And for you, Ska Simps, this album is chock full of legendary Ska artists. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, like, yeah. it's, it's almost like the punk rock karaoke uh, right. where you got all these different legends in there. Who, who yeah. do you have on this album? Besides yeah. our good friend John from Keep Flying. Right, right. So John, John, dear friend, uh, he, he's my he's my homie. Um, but I was lucky enough to link up with a bunch of like legends in the scene. So um, the gentleman that I recorded with his name's Nick Brzees. He used to play in a band called Man Overboard. Now he's a head engineer over at the Gradwell House in South Jersey. Um, and I called him up and I was like, hey, I want to record these songs with you. You recorded all my other bands can you find me a horn section? And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to some people. I'll call you back. <laughs> and so he texts me and he is like, all right, I got your horn section lined up for you, dude. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, I got Matt Stewart from Streetlight Manifesto. He listened to the songs. He'll play trumpet on the record. I got Dave Heck. He plays trombone and Aaron West in the Roaring Twenties. He listened to all your songs, loves them. He's on board. Um, and then, of course, John, I had played a ton of shows with John in my old band back in the day, um, but I hadn't really like kept in touch with him. So, again, Nick came up to bat for me and he calls John and he goes, yo, listen to these songs. You want to blast sax on this? And John immediately replied, yep, yeah, I'm there, dude. So like after spending a week in the studio demoing out a bunch of these songs and then recording like, you know, all the bass and guitar and everything it was like a surreal moment for me to be in the studio and have all of these guys who I friggin' look up to all being like, yeah, dude, these songs rock. Let's go. And also just the professionalism of working with these guys, like, you know, one, two takes, boom, done. So like we blasted through eight songs in six hours, the first, uh, for the first 
EP. And then with What Better Time, I developed those songs, the the second half of this record, I developed those um, over the course of another six months and went into the studio and did it all over again with, with those guys. Um, but so after the whole recording session, I'm listening to the songs every single day and I'm like, ah, Dude, now you know. Now you're picking out shit that you don't like about something. You're like, oh man, I wish I, I wish I did something like that with the with the trombone. So I texted Chris Demakes from Less Than Jake, and I was like, hey, is there any way like uh, Buddy would be interested in throwing a little more trombone on here? And he goes, I'll call him right now. Text me back. Yeah, Buddy's in. So like after the recording session, Buddy's texting me at home, and he's going, hey, I'm sending you files. Let me know if you like the part I wrote for your song. And I'm like. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. So actually, story of my life, that track, um, I had originally tracked different horn parts and Chris and Buddy were both like, yo, we think we could do something cooler with this horn line. Do you mind if if, if I rewrite it for you? And I was like, dude, I'm like, I'm like trying not to fanboy. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's cool, man. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can do that. And then, you know, Buddy emails me back that, you know, those horn lines. And I had all the guys come back into the studio, re-record what Buddy wrote for that song. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome. You know, yeah. what, what is happening in 2023 is I think we have a ska revolution happening. Um, sure. And we have different types of ska. We have the the cat bite who's up in your neck of the woods. Amazing. Um, great, great people. Great band. Um, and then you have the more traditional ska like what title holders do and then you have the keep flying which is i always i told john they're kind of like mall emo with horns it's kind of what you know like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what it yeah. kind of reminds me of so why do you think and it seems like a lot of it's coming out of where back in the day it was coming out of like the west coast a lot of it's now coming out of the east coast stop the presses i mean yeah, obviously you got, you got the ogs the slackers up there what is going on in the east coast as you can I... speak for all of them all the, all the east coast right now what is going on in the East Coast that the ska revolution is kind of being birthed? The third wave of ska is kind of being birthed out of the East Coast right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, th th those that's a heavy, uh, a heavy thing to hold. Being able to speak to the whole as the whole East Coast representative. You're the but representative yeah. now for for the whole I'm, East Coast. All right, all right. Listen <laughs> up, everybody. The East Coast is where it's at. California, you had your time, and now we're here. Okay, East Coast is coming for you. It, we're going to start that '90s rivalry, like with the hip hop. Yep. I, I, you but it's a fun rivalry because bands like you know half past two are so friggin' awesome and i talk to them all the time on instagram and say when can we play a show together as soon as both of us can figure out how to afford <laughs> to get to either sides of the country <laughs> would you like to start a war right now with eddie from voodoo glow skulls we can no no, no. i don't <laughs> i need friends dude i need friends I, I think that title holder has has you know started to snowball and grow into what it has been because I'm good at making friends on the internet. I, right. I've, I've been lucky enough to not make any enemies. I interviewed I interviewed Eddie a few months back, and it was kind of surreal because Voodoo Glow Skulls was my my youth. Oh yeah, you know? and I was like kind of geeking out talking to him, and Eddie's like one of the coolest guys. And, you know, you put him in like the less than Jake, you know, you put Voodoo Glow Skulls in the less than Jake category. And sure. I mean, they were real big fish. All of them were in the 90s. Um, I mean, you can get into the rancid and stuff like that, but they were like sure. the, the the horn driven. So what do you guys have? The album just released and it's a great album. And um, we'll put all the links in the description for you to check it out. How has the reception been just a few days in with, with your fans? I it's been really, really, really cool to see my phone not stop beeping every single like three or four minutes. Um, so it's been a really, really exciting weekend. I've I've been running around, you know, doing personal stuff, but I'm constantly just responding to everybody's DM. We got we already got a um a full album review uh from a guy, um, this gentleman named James Wilson over at Indie Band Guru. Shout out to him. So he did literally a song by song breakdown of the entire record, which was super cool to read. Um, but response is really cool. People are loving it. Um, now the biggest thing is just playing more shows. Like now the record's out. Like, you know, we we developed this record for three years. You know, originally we we put it out as just those first six songs in the story of my life EP. And 
um, when I was approached by Jeremy from Jumpstart Records, he was like, I see this as a vinyl. I want this as a full length. I, you know, I know you already put out those six songs, but I think it's a great idea to repackage this as a full length LP. Um, and then we can, you know, move forward with press and vinyl for it and offer that to everybody who's digging it. So vinyl pre-order is already doing really, really good, way better than I thought it was. I was worried. Um, and he, he sent me the numbers the other day and I like texted all the guys like, dude, people are buying it. <laughs> uh, um, so, so hopefully that's gonna, that's supposed to ship within six weeks. We got word from the record plant that, um, they're, you know, finishing up some stuff, but they're working on it and they're pumping them out. Um, but people are digging it. I'm super happy and I'm super thankful that I have, you know, right now with all the, you know, digital ways to stream music, you can get it to everybody so quickly. Mm -hmm. How did you guys, I wanted to talk to you about that. How'd you get involved with the record label? So that was actually, I mean, our original trombone player, who's uh, Dave Heck from Aaron West. Um, so he played, he played a bunch of shows with us live and also did all the studio stuff with us. Um, so he had a lot of connections in Pennsylvania. And when this is not Croydon Fest three was looking for acts to open the show last year, he passed on our name to Jeremy from Jumpstart, who also runs Broken Goblet Brewery, where they had that festival. That festival last year, that was Pie Tasters, Mustard Plug, Mephiscopheles, Spring Heel Jack, Catbite, Jay Navarro and the Traders, um, and the best of the worst. And I just I got like a random cold call email from Jeremy saying, hey, does title holder want on this show? And I thought it was like a joke. I was like, well, I mean, we played like four shows and our, you know, our next one is going to be like opening for like the who's who. Right. Of, of ska. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So that was our first introduction with Jeremy and Jumpstart Records. And after he saw us play, he kept in touch with me and he said, yo, let's work together. And we spent um, we spent about a year talking about how to strategize this record release, how to put it together. Um, so, I mean, this is this is a long time coming. This time last year, we were talking about, you know, how this we were going to move forward in doing this. Um, and when he listened to the rest of the songs for what better time, um, it just all came together very quickly. And he was nice enough to, you know, make a big investment in us. And it's, you know, for, for the foreseeable future, we are in the jumpstart records family. So I'm super excited, um, and super thankful that he is, you know, taking a stake in us and believes in us. Now with Jumpstart, is it just vinyl or do they handle the digital as well for you guys? They're doing everything for us right now. So they're what what we're doing with them is we've licensed all the songs to Jumpstart to press the vinyl. And, you know, just like with any standard deal, um, you know, everything is recoupable until he, you know, like whatever he invests, he uh, he collects on a royalty a percentage until he makes his money back. Um, and then once he makes his money back, we renegotiate how we do everything. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he, he put the vinyl order in last year and we're, we're about to get it any day now. So I think I might get a couple, um, copies before the rest of the world does. So if I do, I'm going to start signing them and put them up for, uh, you know, maybe some, some fun little charities or something. Right. I, you know, looking into after I've discovered you guys and then looked into Jumpstart, it seems like that's a pretty cool label that has some pretty cool artists on there. Um, a good little roster. Yeah, yeah. And um, I didn't know to the degree of what, you know, what the relationship was with you guys. So when you started this, Matt Sullivan, you start the band. Um, it was kind of almost a solo project at the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah. And then. Yeah, for sure. So how as. For those out there who maybe are solo artists or want to do what you're doing, where you kind of create the band and then you got to put the band together and everything. What are some of the struggles that you have gone through just from creating this to getting to the band in place now? I mean, did you go through a lot of band members to get to this point or was it a pretty easy transition for you? Uh, I mean, when is the music industry ever easy? <laughs> you know, um, I, I mean, I think, the you know the biggest struggle is just you know motivating yourself to keep going you know right. like you never like at the end of the day you know you want to be successful and and you want you want people to like your music and stuff like that but if 
if we could, you know, play a few shows here and there and record a few records, that was the mindset that I had that I was going to be happy with, you know, in, in my mid thirties now, I don't need to be a rock star. I don't need, you know, I don't, I don't need to play like crazy big shows. I just want to have fun with my friends and make music. So when we started this, um, it was just taking it day by day. I, I was, you know, I would think about what I'm going to do next week. I would try to, you know, I would kind of have also, I would, I would set down maybe like a three month plan. I'd be like, what, what can I do? Like, what's one objective I can have each month to like, you know, see where we're going. Um, but as far as like, you know, thing like hurdles that I jumped, I mean, it was just, you know, putting the band together that always takes time, you know, finding reliable people that you actually want to play music with. Um, lucky enough, when you live in New York City, there is never a shortage of amazing people. Right. So when it came time, you know, and just, you know, meeting all, you know, John from Keep Flying and all those guys out on Long Island, the the Long Island music scene is crazy talented. And there's so many ambitious people out there. So putting the band together, I mean, it took some time. Um, but once I had the record recorded, it was very easy you know, showing people that and saying, Hey, was this a band you would like to play in? Right. I didn't you know. There was no auditions really. Like, I mean, I, I had our drummer chase. I haven't been playing in bands with him for, for seven, eight years. Um, the only guy who I didn't know who's in our lineup was our bassist, Joey. I actually met him. Uh, there's like a, a Tinder for musicians. I can't remember what the heck it's called. Um, it, literally, it looks like Tinder, but it, it's just scrolling through musicians. And I remember I put I put up like the music video for Animal. And I was like, hey, you know, because we made the music video before we even played a show. Okay. So all the guys. Yeah. All the guys that are in that video, um, some of them are not like Dan Burke. He's a good friend of mine. He's playing bass. I literally called him and I was like, yo, you're a sick bassist. You want to look cool in a music video? And he's like, yeah, I'm there, dude. Um, but <laughs> when I had that music video, it was good ammunition to like recruit everybody who I needed for it. Cause right. you know, the production value is great. The song is fun. Um, so I don't know. I kind of was rambling a little bit there, but R ramble away, Matt. Yeah. You yeah. So what do you guys have uh, coming up for shows this summer? So and beyond. Yeah. Um, right now it's, it's a little bit of a crazy time in my life. I'm actually getting married in like 27 days. Congra <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, my my fiance, she Danielle, she actually does all of the artwork for us. She does all the designs. Um, super cool. Um, actually, one of the songs can't imagine me on the the record. Me and her wrote and recorded that. So you hear a female voice on that song. That's actually me and Danielle singing it. Oh wow! Um, yeah, one day we'll do that live. I'm not sure, but record release weekend is coming up. So we're super happy. Uh, Friday, June 9th, coming up Friday. Uh, we're playing at Smod Castle Cinemas, which is Kevin Smith's movie theater. There's uh, there's supposed to be like a it's going to be like a talent show slash um, charity event for the theater. And they asked us to play that. So I don't know exactly where we're going to play in a movie theater, but I'm looking forward to that. So that's Friday, June 9th um, at Smod Castle Cinemas in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. And then Saturday, June 10th. We're continuing the party over at Coney Island Brewery um, in Brooklyn. We're going to do a, a late afternoon show. We go on around five o'clock and we're going to play in like a beer garden for everybody. It's a totally free show. So if you're in the New York area, five o'clock, come out. We're going to have a lot of fun. Well, uh, how, are, how did you decide to release an album in the same month that you're getting married? Like, don't you have enough things going on? <laughs> well, so originally we were planning um we were we were really hoping so we played uh this is not croydon fest for this past year and that was on april 22nd and we were really really hoping to put the record out april 22nd but when we found out that the vinyl was going to get pushed a little bit later into the summer right. we like the plant told us that they were going to get it to us by like this date and and so we are we're like okay you know what we're going to do june we'll do june now um so june was on the horizon for i think maybe since february and i just had to kind of live with that jeremy was like yo we want to get it out this record is totally summer vibes we cannot right. wait till the end of the summer and i was like you're absolutely right so yeah it's it's gonna be a crazy month um 
Yeah, I'm I'm going away for a couple weeks in July, and then when we when I come back, uh, we're gonna get busy booking for uh, August, September, October. We've got a couple things that we're working on. Um, there's a real fun festival that happens in Long Island called Stat Fest. Um, I believe that is happening September 17th. Um, but if you look it up online. Yeah, se- September 17th. So it's actually a Sunday, but it's like a party on the beach. They build a huge stage, um, you know, and as long as the weather is good. Last year, the weather was great, but uh, it's a real fun time. That'll be a good one. But trying to be smart about the shows we book, trying to book, um, you know, of course, we're going to play every dirty bar that we can. Right. But we're trying to we're trying to play like, you know, shows that make sense with the genre. Um, we're really good friends with the Stop the Presses crew, so we're always booking with them and chatting with them. Um, people from Catbite are just absolutely amazing humans, and uh, you know, any chance that we get to open for them, we say yes to that event as well. Um, but yeah, keep keep uh, looking out for posts. I will absolutely keep spending ridiculous amounts of money on my credit card for Facebook and, and Instagram ads. So, so want, you can get rid of us if you try. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that because I think that a lot of people, a lot of artists spend the money to promote on Instagram. Yeah. What has been, I mean, have you had great success with it? I mean, obviously, cause you're talking to me, but other than that, have you guys had great success with the advertising campaign? What is, I mean, have have you had a lot of new fans been converted? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, usually what I try to do, like, you know, so I, I put together a budget that I knew was going to be reasonable for this. So like, you know, we, we made those commercials. Uh, my really good friend, Sean Ageman with washed up media, he takes care of all of our videography, um, and so when we played Croydon Fest, I was like, hey, so the idea is like, I want to get a bunch of live footage and cut it into 15 second and 30 second spots that we can make sponsored ads for. Um, and I think compiling that and or combining that rather with um, the advertisements and running those, I think that was a really smart move. Um, I, I don't have like a shit ton of money, but I was like, I think that with a record release, I need to kind of up my game and not just do like a $30 spot. So right. for those targeted ads, I I set a budget of like 150 bucks and I was okay. like, okay, you know, I, I wish I could have done more, but I also don't want to get into crazy debt. But I was like, I, I think this is an important milestone. And I know with all the money that jumpstart is putting behind us, it's not out of the realm of, of something smart to do um, to, to, you know, jump and put a little bit of money into it myself. So I made sure that I gave myself a, a decent budget for each one of these videos. And yeah, I mean, with it for a hundred bucks, I'm getting a ton of organic interaction on all of these ads. You know, it's not just like bots and, and random, uh, you know, random fake accounts and stuff. Everybody that is, I'm that we're gaining as a new follower is interacting with us is sending me a DM going, how the hell did I not know about you before this? So <laughs> it's, it's friggin' working. It's cool. I mean, of course you wish you wouldn't have to spend this money to get this kind of engagement, but I wholeheartedly think that it's worth it, especially if you believe in, you know, what you're, what you're putting out there to, if you want to put some money into the advertising, um, I, I was just saying to a friend of mine who was asking me advice about, you know, you know, recording a record and stuff like that. And I said, so, hey, what's your budget? OK, that's your budget. Something to keep in mind is if this is your budget to record a song, you know, say if, if you're going to spend five hundred dollars to go to the studio, get that song recorded and get it mixed. It's probably a good idea to probably have another five hundred dollars in marketing. Right. Once the song's ready to come out. And I mean, five hundred is is. is it's a lot of money to a lot of people, but if you're serious about what you're doing, it's totally friggin' worth it. Right. Well, I think a lot of people think that they're going to be able just to go viral just on their talent or the song. Yeah. And the algorithm's not going to allow that to happen. Never does. It never does. You know, it, I, I've hid in my basement and and looked felt like such an idiot dancing to my you know phone and stuff like that on TikTok and those never go anywhere so I I don't know <laughs> I have not hacked uh, how to do how to do uh, 
good on TikTok, but we we've I've actually made like a lot of really cool friends with bands mm-hmm. through TikTok, which is cool. So that's fun. So back to the album, what better time? Um, what is the general theme that you want people to know what the album is? I think the general theme of the record is is just like fun music, you know. I I made this project to just kind of take my mind away from the world imploding during, you know, during the pandemic when everything was on fire. All I wanted to do was have something that was just going to make me feel happy. Um, I remembered being 15, 16, 17 and going to ska shows and just seeing everybody dance. And then before, you know, before the pandemic, going to a less than Jake's show and just, you know, just feeling so friggin' inspired after that event and being like, dude, you know, like, okay, being in an emo band is fun. And yeah, it's cool to be really serious as a songwriter, but sometimes it's fun to just have a a bunch of songs that you can just friggin' dance to and just right. like everybody's smiling. So, I mean, the theme of the, of the record is just what better time than now to have a good time. You know, I, mm-hmm. I like uh, a friend of mine said, you know, he, uh, this older guy that that I'm friends with uh, that I work with, he goes, you know what your band is, man? Your band's a party band. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. He goes, all right, yeah, I, I dig that. Yeah, we are a party band. So what did you, what kind of music were you playing before you did? Um, older? I had a band uh, from like 2014 to 2018 that was just like straight up pop punk. You know, I, I, I was trying to go for... Um, when we first started, I was doing everything in like drop C. I was trying to go like the a day to remember route. I really right. like, you know, I loved it. I love, I still do. I still listen to all those songs, but I was really, really like honed into that kind of vibe. And we, we rocked, we did a lot of shows. Um, but you know, at some point, you know, sometimes when you're in a band, it, you, you wake up one day and if you realize that your heart's not in it, you're like, why the heck am I doing this anymore? If, if I don't feel it, everybody else is going to know that I don't feel it once you play live. Um, so I took about a year off after that project uh, evaporated and then the pandemic hit and I was like, you know what? All right, this is the perfect time. I got fired. The government keeps sending me money for some reason. All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to put this into making a band. And that's what I started to do. Now back to ska real quick. Uh, who are some of your favorite ska bands? Like who, who are the bands that got you into the genre? So, I mean, like my top three is for sure got to be less than Jake boss tones and real big fish. Like that was my introduction to ska back when I was like 14. Right. I remember, um, you know, I remember when sell out came out and oh, yeah. I was, like, Whoa, what the hell is this? You know? Right. And uh, I remember my brother giving me the boss tones record. Let's face it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, that was kind of, those were my favorite bands and growing up, I was always in pop punk bands, but the only reason I wasn't in a ska band is because I didn't have friends who played horns. Right. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I was in bands that wanted to sound like newfound glory because I couldn't find a horn section. Um, right. So, you know, it was very serendipitous to be able to link up with, you know, Matt and Dave and buddy and Jay, John and, and all those guys when, when I was able to find the horn section. Right. Now, uh, but, yeah. Last question for you, and then I'll let you go because you got a we got a fiance waiting. We can't we can't upset her because I take I keep you to all right. All right. <laughs> I, I probably should I should probably interview Danielle on what it's like being engaged to a guy who's making an album <laughs> while she's planning for a wedding. So maybe oh yeah, I'm helping too. I'm <laughs> I I give my suggestions and and I give my moral support and emotional support. Well, you know, uh, Tim and Britt uh, from Catbite, they told me when I interviewed them that they had the pie tasters play their wedding. That's so friggin' cool. So yeah. I think we should like continue to love. We should get Danielle oh. in here, see if we can get yeah. Catbite to play your wedding. Oh, we could just like yeah, pay yeah. it forward with another one, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That would be so cool. That would be the best. That would be the best gift ever. Yeah, ma- your mom would probably love, you know... <laughs> Brittany like smashing a bottle on her head while she's singing oh, or something. Like I that. I think that the dance floor would light up the entire <laughs> night. It would be so good. So, I'll, text, I'll text them. 
So like if, if people want to hit you up, once again, all the links will be in the description. Cool. Are they going to hear from you? Like if they hit you up on Instagram or is there other people that do that? Or what is For the sure. role? What is the role that like these days, now that you have an album out, what are the roles that you're playing? Um, doing the marketing, the fan interaction. Is that, is that all on you these days? I wear every single hat in this band at the moment. Yeah. So, I mean, my, my live guys, um, they're amazing. And we, uh, we, you know, we do a lot of work together. Right. Um, I'm doing all the, all the marketing, I'm doing all the social media, all the interaction and whatnot. Um, so yeah, if you, if you reach out, if you send a DM or something, you're talking to me, um, anytime I, I try to put aside about like a half hour a day also to just interact with people on social media. So if you send a message or if you comment and you see me do the little heart and reply, that's me talking to you. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm wearing every single hat. It's exhausting, but I chose this. I can't be mad. <laughs> when, when is the, when is the wedding? July first. Okay. July first. So all the title holder stands leave Matt alone starting June 29th. Give just give it a week. Give him a week. I know I'm gonna get in trouble if I'm at the wedding and I'm like, hey, dude, thanks so much. <laughs> You're going to be in the ceremony, like responding to DMs. Hold on, babe. My friend Patrick Benedict just told me that the record is fire. I got to let him know I appreciate him. You'll you'll be there in the middle of the ceremony and be like, hold on. I'll do my vows in a second. But uh, <laughs> but a girl just told me the album is great. Hold on, yeah. wife to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be. Yeah. I, no, I know better. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I promise, Danielle. So uh, are you guys just going to sit on this album for a while or are you already starting to work on new, new music? You know, I really want to work on booking as many shows as I possibly can, but there's already seven new songs that I've demoed out at home. I'm just trying to like behave and not go back to the studio. Cause I do like, I would love to go and record this stuff right now. Um, but I know that with the new record out, we need to play out as much as possible. So right. there is a new record. Um, it's in the works. I'm I'm super excited about the new songs. If you like dig through my like Instagram and like TikTok videos, you you can see me actually like uh, with my guitar. Like I'll be like, yo, hey, I just came up with something. Is it cool? And some of those videos that I posted, I ended up turning into full songs already. So there's new material. Um, but the big focus until the end of the year, I think, is to play out as much as possible to spread the word, to get people to be able to hear us, um, you know, so that we can just, you know, keep this machine running. Well, if you come to Nashville, Tennessee, um, you got a place, you guys got a place on my couch. That's actually really funny that you say that because we might be coming out to Nashville. Um, there's a, a fantastic company called Interstate Music, mm -hmm. and they're talking to us about potentially putting them up in or putting us up in a spot that I guess Jelly Roll used to have a studio. Okay. And and now he doesn't own that space, but Interstate Music grabbed it. And they're asking us if we want to coordinate going out there to record five or six songs and have a film crew do like a behind the scenes documentary of like making the record. Oh, wow. So I don't know. I have no details other than they pitched it to us and want us to know what's going on. But Jeff Peterson, who runs that company is a wonderful dear friend of mine. And we're figuring out when that's going to be, but that's probably going to be a next year thing because I want to make sure we play as much live, but I'm going to give you a call if we come out to Nashville for sure. And Danielle, I will make sure that he behaves when he's in Nashville. We'll just eat a lot of food. That's, we'll eat a that's, lot of hot chicken. Yeah, that's my favorite thing in the world to do. I'm such a foodie. <laughs> uh, Matt from Title Holder, thank you for your time. All the links in the description. And uh, when when we have something new coming out or we got a tour or something, I'd love to bring you back on and um, exploit you a little bit more. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, buddy.